access the podcast of OA, located deep within Sector 14845, and powered by the Emerald Light of Will. The podcast of OA is your guide to the Green Lantern universe. Hosted by Lantern Myron Rumsey, the podcast of OA begins now. Hey, Green Lantern fans, welcome to episode number 242 of the podcast of VOA. I'm Myron Rumsey, joined by my friend on the other end, Mr. Phil Bova. We've got uh, some Green Lantern comics to talk about tonight. Actually, just one we're going to be talking about in this episode, Green Lantern number 10 that came out a couple weeks ago. And uh, this is the first issue to have a little bit of a tie in the House of Brainiac, uh, I'd say tangentially. Uh, and this this issue really unravels a lot of uh, what's going on on Oa and some of the, the uh, antics that Theros is up to. Uh, Phil, I, I don't know about you, but this is an exciting time to be a fan. Mm-hmm. It's been a great year for this. I mean, I mean, he's had good 10 solid issues. And I mean, sure, you, you can't expect a level to be reached at every issue to hit, hit on point. I mean, you're you're aiming for the... The, the sky is there but i mean but it's been a good lead up i mean i like where it's been going uh it hasn't been predictable but i'll say some some points have been flushed out that you could see were occurring in the background you know i mean there's still i still think kilowog's alive somewhere yeah he, he he's somewhere He's gonna, they're going to find him. They're going to something's going to happen. They're going to find him. So yeah, yeah, I agreed. Uh, th- this issue is when we get into it. Uh, wasn't my favorite, but there were some things in it I really liked. I think it shows a little bit about maybe Jeremy Adams not knowing a lot about the comic continuity and in some things that I felt a little a little off. But we'll get into it when we get there. Uh, but otherwise, uh, in, in Green Lantern news. The July solicitations just came out and it confirmed that Green Lantern War Journal is going to end with issue 12, which is a sad thing. Yeah, it's a bummer. It's been great. I, I loved it. I still love it. Yeah, it's it's a very good book. Uh, you know, back when you and I talked to Philip Kennedy Johnson, he, he did come out and say, you know, even though he pitched this as kind of a 12 issue series, DC wanted an ongoing and he was like, you know, the comment he made to us was that, well, if they make it an ongoing, I just can't guarantee I can stick around because I have other commitments. Yeah. And uh, I, I think sales information is hard to come by, but what information we've gotten has been that the book has been kind of underperforming, which is unfortunate because it's an awesome book. You know, that's a shame. I mean, I don't know. I mean, comic book fans are finicky. I mean, it's, it's hard to nail, it's hard to nail a certain audience and, and get them really, really attached and invested in characters. I mean, and I've always talked about with other fans, like, you know, like who they like, you know, and it's like, well, okay, so you like somebody for something, and and, and let's say you you read it for a year or whatever the case may be. I mean, and then you read somebody else's work, you know, and then so on and so on and so forth. You build up a you build up a library in your head on on how you develop your character and how these writers have developed it inside of you, right? But at the same time, if you go back generations and years of reading comic books like yourself, me, and a lot of other fans, you know, you've seen different variations of these characters written and underperform and perform at certain points of their life, right? True, true. So it kind of it kind of just ebbs and flows like like the comic book world does. You know, your popularity can can peak at certain points, and a lot depends on on what kind of culture is involved in, in the fandom. You know, and you kind of wonder. The kind of where there's two things that, are, that come to my mind as, I'm, as I've been thinking about it. It's like if the Lanterns TV show was on the air, would that impact sales? I think it might. I think it would. I mean, if you're just if you're just basing your media off of two books, I mean, you only got a specific target audience, right? So that's only your comic book readers, right? Well, it's kind of unfair to the the gajillion other Lantern fans that okay, well, that's they grew up with John Stewart in in the cartoon, and they want to see him in a cartoon or something, but. I don't know. I mean, like I said, man, comic book fans are finicky. They just sometimes they latch on really, really hard to things, and, and I think a lot they can't of let go of crap. <laughs> I think a lot of John's fan base comes from the animated series from Justice League, and I would agree. I, I think this is one of those cases where it doesn't always translate to comic book sales. It, uh, it really doesn't, and and it's, and it's also safe to say that yeah, that might be like the core of where I think a lot of the John Stewart fans are coming from. You know, but you still have your diehard fans that go back even further to Mosaic and, and you know, and his development over the course of the years. But 
It, I think it's pretty rare with John Stewart these days because, like you said, a lot of it they develop their own kind of persona of him off of different kind of medium altogether. And yeah, it wasn't in a book. It wasn't in a book. Well, and I kind of wonder too if the previous series that centered on John and its sales weren't bad, but it wasn't the hit that I think everybody thought it was going to be, and and it certainly was divisive as you and I talked about it ad, ad nauseum through that that year. If that might have negatively impacted the, the book at a little bit, you know, just carry over bad taste in your mouth kind of thing. It also doesn't help that John's biggest run, of, I shouldn't say biggest, his probably most notable run prior to the, the last series was Mosaic, which is not collected anywhere due to the writer and his misdeeds, which we're not going to dwell upon here. But unfortunately, he was saddled with a writer who did some horrific things and DC is not going to reprint those books, I don't think, anytime soon because of it. So you've got two two runs. One run that was good with written by a bad person and one run that was bad or written by a questionable person. <laughs> and that doesn't help. Well, and then, I mean, look at it like this. Go back to when I first started this podcast. I probably never really, really, really talked about John Stewart unless he was mentioned or in a book or we had to read him, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I've never rallied on him. I've always no, said he was okay, no. blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? I'll be honest with you. This past year, he's really, really turned me on to the character. And I would read it if Kennedy Johnson was, was going to continue to do it. But I'm afraid on who's going to come on board. And, you know, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Thorne's run really let the bad taste in my mouth with how he was, how he's depicted. And it just was kind of like, oh, this is gross. But I think. I think PKJ really hit hit the nail on the head with writing him. Yeah, and and I just don't, I don't think DC has the writing talent that they used to have. That I don't trust. I, I without knowing who would take it on, I don't have a good feeling about who would take it over and what they would do with it. The only thing I can think of is if he, if he, if he was to come over into Hal's book, you know, in the Green Lantern book, or, I mean. High hopes they have some kind of Green Lantern Corps book comes out of what's coming next with this big event and this, and this next ignorant event, the summer event for DC. Yeah. What they're called after what they're called now? What's the uh, new one called this uh, summer? Ab absolute power. You know, at least it's not absolute night or something or <laughs> <laughs> absolute crisis. You know, I'll uh, be that. Well, I, and I'm glad you brought up Absolute Power because I didn't put it in the show notes, but Absolute Power is going to be taking over books for a while this summer, impacting some of the books, not all of them, but some. And it looks like a lot of it's uh, Mazo related. Uh, there's a there's an Amazo that takes on Green Lantern powers. It looks like Hal gets depowered once again, which I'm like, man, you know, this is the second time an event has kind of interfered with this, this series. I'm not sure what I think about it. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely have an opinion when it comes out. But right now I'm like, I'm not so sure I'm thrilled about it, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. You just, you just got off an event, right? I mean, right, you, right. You came off a, an event not too long ago. I mean, you know, and not only that, you got the house of Brainiac going on. That's supposed to be happening across a lot of medium. So all of a sudden you're going to just jump on a Mazo right after house of Brainiac. I mean, right. Right. <laughs> okay, well, right. and, and, and the thing is like, when you look at the solicitations, they've been putting Carol Ferris front and center in her star Sapphire outfit. And I'm like, they just, it, it, I think it's misleading. You hate to, you hate to see solicitations and covers give away major plot points, but at the same time, it's kind of hard to, you know, you're, 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 you're advertising books that are coming out three or four months down the road. How do you not have some of it when it, when it, it comes to play, but I or, don't know. Or it's a hook misleading. I Could mean. be. Could be, could There's be. There's a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon that she's gonna be back at Star, uh, Star Sapphire, and you know the way the way she's been acting, I can see how she would go that route because she's getting kind of tired of Hal's antics, and now Hal's gone, right? So, you know, she doesn't know where he went, and she may very well come looking for him. Yeah, in well, in form. There's a very Green Lantern centric book coming out as part of Absolute Power that's not part of the Green Lantern series that has Hal on the cover in his flight outfit with no ring. Green Lantern logo on the sleeve. And uh, I think Alan Scott's on the cover and Star Sapphire's on the cover. So mm -hmm. one presumes that she's going to play a role because it's not the first time she's shown up on, on a cover. Uh, but, but we'll see. Solicitations can be misleading because the solicitation for this issue we're about to talk about 
talks about Carol Ferris making a big decision. She's not even in the book. So, <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of solicitations, is there any is there any uh, Green Lantern that's coming out with that that dark label? Their their black label they're coming out with. They they have not said anything about what's going to be part of this new Absolute Comics line thing, and there hasn't been anything more about the black label book. So. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on with that. But the other thing that did come out, out of the solicita solicitations was that Sin Sons is canceled at six issues, which not terribly surprised because we all know Peter Tomasi left to go to uh, the Ghost Machine label. So he wasn't going to be staying on the book anyway. And I don't think it got the reaction that they were hoping it was going to get. Well, you know, if they're going to gear towards kids, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a little Sinestro in that kind of unit, right? I mean, he's a good, he'd be a good depiction for, you know, overcoming fear. I mean, I mean, kids can adapt to that. And if he's written well enough, I mean, they'd get it, right? I mean, you could have any kind of lantern in there, a small howl. He'd have got willpower. I mean, you could, so much can be done with it. They just, what, what was their marketing tactic for it? I didn't understand right. its purpose, right? It was six issues that, and that's fair, but like, did it did it develop anything or lead into anything, or is it going to have any kind of ramifications for anything? And what was the point, right? So exactly, exactly. <laughs> the the one thing I did notice in the the listing for the last issue was that uh, Korg was going to find out the truth about his lineage. So we'll find out if he really is Sinestro's son or not. Uh, I, I'm betting he's not, but that's just me. Or uh, yeah, I, yeah. I'd be honest. I don't care. Which, by the way, Sinestro shows up in the old before Zod. Oh, did oh, that's right. Yes, you're right. You're right. He shows Man, up. In, that's going to be awesome. That's going to be interesting. I don't think those two have ever paired off. Oh, wait a minute. They came I, in contact. Did they came in contact with? I think they did in Forever Evil. Maybe. <laughs> I guess that would have been yeah. it. <laughs> Right. I, and I don't know, you know, it's interesting because it doesn't mention him by name in the listing, you know, the, the, the issue information, but he does show up on the alternate cover. So mm -hmm. you're, we're, we're assuming that he's a part of it, right? There it is. Not, There's a hook. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, speak I'm going to get excited and we're going to be on here like a few weeks from now. I'm like, <laughs> man, I'm totally bummed. Sinestro wasn't even in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Sinestro though, that uh, DC heroes and villains game that you and I are both playing. He is now a playable character. I have not gotten him yet. I still haven't gotten Hal. I'm still, I've gotten John Stewart and that's it of, of the Lantern characters. Okay. I got John Stewart and I, and I got Jessica today. I got Jessica Cruz. And not only that, I spent my, spent my whole entire day throughout the day up in her level. So she could get up there. With, <laughs> with I, I, I'm at level 38 as a, as a team. How do you get that high, man? I'm only on like 21. Well, but I've been playing for a while. I played it a while ago and then I oh. jumped off of it. So when I came back in and logged back in, I was still where I left off. So I, I, I do have a jump on you in terms of time. But uh, that whole list of Drac level, Ugh. for me, she's she's 300,000 health points when I go to fight her. And I can barely make a dent because her attack attacks your entire team. Yeah. Yeah. It wipes me out on one lump sum. Yeah. Right. And, and I barely beat beat Raven today. She was hard. I um with Lissa Drac, I can survive about four attacks from her, and then my characters are all gone. But so I, I can't that, beat it. And and that little sequence is gonna run out because those only go for a certain amount of days. Correct. Right? Correct. That's the thing. Oh, these games, you know, I get it. And you know what? <laughs> we're falling for them. Right here. We're talking about it. We're falling for everything right. the game that's supposed to be targeting us for. Which is a cool game. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's fun to play. I, I had played it and I jumped off of it because I got bored with it. I only came back because of the Green Lantern content, of course. Right. But if I don't end up with Hal after a couple months, I'm out. Uh, I mean, yeah. Where are they? Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, and then I was surprised I got Jessica Cruz. Like, I was, you, and I bought the premium when when I got John Stewart. I just went ahead and bought the premium, whatever that four ninety nine was, and I said that's all I'm spending. You know, four ninety nine on the premium content. I mean, you have to unlock the capsules to get them, and Hal is a tier five character, which makes him harder to get. Yeah. So you have to. It's it's the luck of the draw, which I hate that. Like, let me recruit who I want to recruit. Let me let me earn some tokens or what have you, and and have the characters each worth a different amount, and and you go and you buy the character you want instead of having yet, this yet they, random. Yet they stick you with Batman at the beginning. Oh, well, of course. You know, because here's your here's your character. All right, Robin. <laughs> let's throw Robin in there. Right. I will right. say my black man is pretty cool. I like black man on my team. 
So uh, today I got my Kilowog superpowers figure in the mail from McFarlane. Uh, as you pointed out, very interesting. Kilowog's name is not even on the front of the package. <laughs> <laughs> is it on the back? Is it uh, on the back? Yeah, there's there's on the back. There's a description, okay. you know, the, the stuff they usually give you the information about the characters. So he is mentioned there. But on the front, it just says the Green Lantern Corps in the upper corner. <laughs> so is that taken from uh, Tales of the Green Lantern Corps? That's the original logo from the Green Lantern Corps back when, um, during volume three, near the end, for like the last 20 or four issues or so, they did a Green Lantern Corps book. So it changed its name from Green Lantern to Green Lantern Corps. Uh, it was after issue 200 where the Guardians left. And it was basically Salak and Kilowog and, and John and Katma and Hal gotcha. and that kind of stuff. And, and that was the time frame when they came back to Earth with, with Arishia and, and so on. And that whole romance thing happened and Kat Matui and John are together and Star Sapphire kills Kat Matui and all that stuff. It was during that time frame. That was when Kilowog came to Earth, and uh, really when Kilowog became a, a a big character. That's kind of around the time frame when he was introduced. He came back and and uh, helped to de- helped uh, create the Rocket Reds. Speaking of not speaking of which, <clears throat> but I don't think I showed off uh, my the housewarming gift you, you you and your wife got me, did I? No, I don't think so. I don't Ooh, think so. I think I might have to get it. Hold on, I'm gonna go grab it. Well, while Phil's doing that, uh, let me just talk about Green Lantern on the panel a little bit. Both Hal Jordan and Sinestro appeared very briefly in Batman Superman's World's Finest, number 26. Now, I have not been reading this series, so I don't know the plot line, but it has to deal with it. Look like there were Phil, are you reading World's Finest at all? No, sure not. Okay. So I'm not sure what's going on, but there's miniature versions of like Mixoplex versions of different characters. And in the most recent issue, there's a battle and and it was the, I don't know. I don't know who reads the, writes the book, but it was the dumbest sequence where Hal is unconscious and Batman and Robin um, r- rescue Hal and they're carrying his body and, and Robin like beats the snot out of Sinestro. Yeah, right. I was like, I, I, no effing way is, yeah. is Robin beating the snot out of Sinestro. I mean, come on. That's going to happen. But at oh, any okay. rate. There it is. Ah, uh-huh, yep. Bum, 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 bum. Speaking of Sinestro. The man with the plan. <laughs> Love it. Soon, All right. soon, soon when I get my whole setup down here, like uh, electronically sound so I can get a better signal, I'll, I'll be able to show off my stuff like you are. Yeah. And unfortunately you had, you had, you have that problem. You're in the, you're in the basement in, in the signal. Like if you move yeah. three feet, the wrong direction, we, yeah. we were having all kinds of technical issues, but. And it's funny because my phone does the same thing adjacent to where I'm sitting, which is the laundry room. Right. And I was down here on FaceTime with her and it started cutting out and losing signal. I was like, okay, so clearly there's a point in the middle of my home in the basement that I don't have a signal going to the end. (laughs) Whatever. All right. Well, friends, we're going to take a quick pause. When we come back, we're going to be talking Green Lantern number 10. We'll be back in just a minute. Listen up, all you white circles. This is Drill Instructor Kilowog, and you're listening to the podcast of Oa. And don't you forget it, boozers. All right, Lantern fans. GL number 10, Planet Oa, headquarters of the United Planet Lantern Corps. Opening sequence. How's that for being back on Oa? Yeah, I I, I love being back in space. I mean, it was nice to have a, a span of time with Hal on Earth and getting getting things resituated. But uh, Green Lantern in space, that's that's my favorite part, you know. And, uh, you know, Hal's kind of lurking about with with Joe Mullane. Uh, she's trying to brief him a little bit here and there. They're being pursued by the ring hunters. And they make this long dive down underground. And they are greeted by Slack and 2-6. And, and Kyle is really having a hard time. And you have to presume that this is because of his time as a White Lantern. Is that how you read it? I mean, I didn't know what was going on with Kyle other than the fact that he's just kind of losing it. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. He hasn't been, I mean, he, he's been in and out of 
continuity, I guess you could say, for so long that he I don't <laughs> he doesn't feel like he has a cohesive storyline that that's that's tethered to anything. I mean, when's the last time he's had a significant a, a prominent part in anything right during the last one he was captured you didn't see him for the longest time eventually yeah. he gets rescued during what was it the the dark crisis he gets rescued during that he hasn't had much to do with here you can tell he's clearly something's bothering him and he's clearly in, in, affected in some way this is your I, white lantern myth here i see what you're yeah at. yeah I, i'm i'm thinking that because he he's still somewhat connected to the emotional spectrum because of his time as a white lantern, the fact that these batteries have been destroyed, it's imp impacting him on a, a mental or psychological level is, is the way I'm reading it. That would make sense. And that would track with how he is with his emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and Slack has been working out. He's been doing some <laughs> ad crunches. He does look a little beefy, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you walk into the room, Slack. <laughs> He's like, I'm here to pump you up and all four hands come together, you know. Uh he, yeah, he's he's definitely been working out at the gym. He's been he's been working on his abs. So uh, so now now so we're in this whole like I guess underground movement of the lantern versus the underground movement of the lanterns versus the United Lantern, the United Planet Lanterns, I guess you mm -hmm. could say. You know, so you got it. You, I mean, even this leading up with how they're they're trying to sneak around, go underground, stuff like that, and these guys are still searching for them. You got to know it's going to come to like some kind of civil war, right? I mean, right, it's, right. It's, it's got to be faction versus faction here. It's going to explode in somebody's face at some point. Yeah, and you've got the resistance. You know, they're actually calling this underground area the resistance core base. So yeah, there's there's clearly some dividing lines here, and you know, you find out that Joe was sent out to the back to the planet Enduring. So all the veteran lanterns were sent away, uh, very much as you and I were were kind of speculating that you know the reason why the whole thing happened in Korgar was to get Hal off the table, where they're doing other other less extreme measures to get all the veterans away, because they're less likely to follow the crap that. That Theros is dishing out. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, it, is there any kind of illusion to what his Theros is like overall? He's got to have a goal here, right? I mean, yeah. there's some crap going on, and I get it. And there's, it's probably going to be this big lead up, but it can't be just Theros like wanting to do what he wants to do. And then we get to the end, and he's like, oh, you defeated me, blah, blah, blah. I, I hope there's like a reveal that Theros is into something that's going to happen big or have a big impact on the lantern core yeah i mean we find out that theros is he's experimenting with the source lantern that john stewart created he's he's tampering with it uh they're they're doing different things but we don't know what his end game is really right. i mean it was it was alluded to back on that ish that story with jessica cruz that uh that theros at least he was saying externally that he was trying to rid the galaxy of the pollution of the emotional spectrum. But I don't think that's really what's going on. I think that maybe that's a cover because here he's experimenting and toying with it. And I, I think he's trying to harness it. He's trying to do something with it, obviously of, of bad intent. And I wonder if is, is, is Theros really Theros? Cause he's a Duralyn, but could somebody Ooh. else have, bump theros off and have taken his place because maybe it's, you know you know who i'd like it to be hmm. controller moo that'd be kind of cool yeah. uh but you know durlins are gonna durlin right so right. who right. knows i i i i thought the part the part about this i didn't like and and it's rare for me to find something i don't like about what jeremy adams is doing but how questioning joe mullane to the extent that he questions her here I thought that was a little off too, because even Hal by this point should know there's something odd going on with Samantha. sure, right? And and Salak is there too. You know, I mean, okay, Joe he doesn't have a lot of history with Joe Mullane. We we saw them interact a very little bit in the last run, but they haven't had a whole lot of interactions beyond that. So I can understand, you know, here's somebody who's very inexperienced. Why should you just take her word for it? But Salak mm -hmm. is there too. So obviously. Salak believes it too, and so does Two Six. Two Six is a more veteran character than Joe Mullane is. If these two characters believe it, then there's got to be something to it. So for Hal to question it, I I was it, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit because there's no reason for him to question it. I mean, this is 
this is like a, a situation where, you know, in the last run, Joe Mullane was in charge of the Green Lantern Corps on Oa, you know, the the, the uh, efforts to kind of keep things under control. And Hal's on Earth. And part of my cons- my complaints about that run, one of many, was that Hal is not the kind of guy who would have just stayed on Earth because Joe Mullane tells him to stay on Earth because she he doesn't know her from a hole in the ground. Right. Exactly. So, <laughs> so, you know, in that in that regard, now he's here and she's saying stuff and now he's questioning her when he didn't question her before. You know, I mean, I would have questioned her before when I don't know this person and she's telling right. me to keep park my butt on earth when they, you know, my friends are missing and hurt. That's not how Jordan, and this isn't how Jordan either in my mind. Uh, to me, it's a little bit of a mischaracterization because he, you know, he, he's got Salak here. This is somebody he's trusted and he has a lot of history with. You wouldn't be questioning her in the same manner you see here and there's a couple of other things that he does in this issue that i'm like okay i i get the hot shot hard you know person does things sometimes it's portrayed sometimes as he acts before he thinks and that's not that's not the way i've always read hal i've always read hal that it's that rapid cognition and that he knows he's going to figure it out on the way down because his brain his ears as a test pilot and and a fighter pilot uh, he's his mind is is processing things at a rapid rate, and that's how I've always read Hal. Uh, so to me, this this cocky, I'm going to do what I want to do because it's me. I have a hard time with that part, uh, and you know it is what it is. But I I just found that scene a little, and, and it happens again later on in this issue. I mean, he's, he's got his arms crossed. Where's your proof? Right, uh, you know. <laughs> This I, after I, Kyle, who looks like he's losing his mind. Exactly. He's he's interacting with Kyle. There's a problem. He knows there's other kinds of problems because he's seen it. He obviously didn't like Theros in the first place. So he's got good reason to question Theros. So why would you question it if another lantern from Earth tells you there's a problem? Uh, my other thing is, and I said a little bit about this last, last episode, last time we talked about this series, was I understand you're you're giving Jill Mullane page time because she's an Earth Lantern, but I'd rather it have been Salak. You know, I would rather there be more emphasis on the alien Green Lanterns. We're on Oa for crying out loud, and right. and we're we're elevating the other Earth Lanterns and, and using them more than some of these aliens. And it, I why mean, does, why does an Earth Lantern got to be the face of your alien right? Planet? Why why does every time we turn around it has to be? An Earth Lantern. And I, and, I, and I get it from the perspective of you're trying to please all these different fan bases. But at the same time, I, I'm just kind of I'm I'm really kind of over it with the Earth Lanterns. And I know we've had the explanation as to why there's so many. Uh, but to me, it's just unless you're going to have the books to support that many characters, let's get rid you of don't just throw them in there for throwing them in there. Say, I mean, like Simon right. Baz could support like what, two panels, something like that. Yeah. He's not even in there the whole rest of the issue. And he's right. He's right. He, I think he opens up Baz. You're okay. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. you know, we don't see Baz again. I'm I'm happy to see Salak. I'm happy to see two six and they actually got to talk, which is good. They're not just relegated to background characters, sure. but they're also minimized compared to the others. Like why couldn't it have been Salak taken how to, to go do what they do later in the issue? I don't know. Do you think comic book characters have the same feeling like about screen time that actors and actors, <laughs> you know, I mean, if you, if you think about it, if you're a, man, I'm a background character. I'm just going to be written in. I'm just going to have my face in there. I got no words, no balloons, no word bubbles. No thought bubbles. I mean, <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> the things we lament over sometimes, but that's ah. just, you know, so here I, we are in the science cells, though. Now we get to yep. the science cells, and and you know Hal sees Jessica and uh, working for Theros, and realizes that she's working undercover and is the person on the inside. And we see this other this other Green Lantern volunteer uh, really have a hard time when he gets put into the source energy. Um, <laughs> it doesn't end well for him. That's well, for sure. And guess who guess who pops up? They put Lantern in, in here, and is that Larflees? Uh well, Larflees yes. is there. It says they've been throwing, they've been throwing anyone in here that asks questions. Larflees is a whole nother story. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. And we do see, uh, as you said, your your favorite Simon Baz shows up. Yep, 
and um, they they have found Kelly Quintella, mm -hmm. uh, who the and who they uh, and, and this was the next point is Hal sees Kelly Quintella, and he acts like, oh no, Kelly, he's never met Kelly Quintella. <laughs> Do you think he sees it from a, a kid that's a kid? I don't know. I don't even know. He didn't even know he knew her name because he's never interacted with her before. He said uh, it, that he, is that him that says her name? That's uh yeah. Yeah, that is because that's his he's like, no, Kelly. And and Hal's gotta like rescue her. And it's like he didn't even know this girl from I mean, I realize he would want to rescue anybody, right? But he doesn't know who she is. There's no relationship there for him to have any big feelings for. Uh, okay, so let's throw the benefit of the doubt, maybe. Okay. Regardless of the fact that he's supposed to know, he, so you don't think he knows her name at all, really? No. They've never I, met, right? They've never met. I mean, when when he, when Hal finally goes to Oa in the last series, she's already unconscious. He's never met. He's never met her. So maybe, okay, devil's advocate here. Maybe somewhere, somebody <laughs> said panel. something to him about Kelly. You know, hey, there's this lantern, got the gauntlet. You know, we might need to keep an eye on her, blah, 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 this and that. And then he Kyle walks in, sees a child defenseless being probed by an alien because nobody wants that done, regardless if you're a kid or otherwise. And then there you go. There's Hal's response. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but at any rate, you know, Hal, Hal, of course, breaks through the glass and charges, yeah. goes in guns a-blazing. Why did they think they were going to talk him out of that? He already had his mind made up when he's, you know, at least he's, duh, he was going to do that anyway. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, they find out that that uh, Hal's ring is not affected by the ring hunters, which I thought was kind of a neat a neat way to use the manhunter armor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that part is kind of neat. But it, it's interesting, in the very beginning, they're so worried about the ring hunters, and they really don't pose much of a threat when you when, when it comes to push and shove down here at the bottom of the science cell. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so Baz does have a few panels. He's uh, he's he, oh, he's got some action sequences. Yeah, he has word. He's got some words. Okay. He doesn't. Uh, he gets shot in the back. Word I bet you he wishes he had his pistol right about now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where he's carrying Kelly, right? Yeah, he was trying to carry Kelly, and he ends up dropping her. Uh, but one of the things I liked. I don't know that this was intentional or not is Hal's fighting with a shield and a sword, which was kind of a callback to the Morrison run. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but if it's intentional, I thought it was a nice touch. It was cool. And then the boxing gloves on the next step, on the next page. Well, yeah, you have to have the, I think that's Classic. that's mandatory. I think it's in Hal's contract that he has to have boxing gloves <laughs> at least once, once every few appearances. <laughs> Probably patented. <laughs> <laughs> if you look really closely at the contract, it says copyright Hal Jordan right on it. <laughs> It's a box of gloves. <laughs> uh, but anyway, they escape. And, and it's, you know, we do we do hear that Lara Flees was captured and that he nearly took out all of the UP lanterns, which I find comical. I I, I would like to have seen that because <laughs> go Lara Flees. <laughs> I know. That would have been really cool to watch. And they escape with Razor, which is nice. We get Razor back. And they escape with that bird uh, lantern that Hal interacted with uh, an issue or two back. So that was kind of nice. They get, get someone to interrogate. Unfortunately, Kelly doesn't. Uh, she doesn't get. She doesn't get uh, freed from the science cell. And, they, and apparently, they want to do something to with her, uh, which I think is interesting. You know, she's critical to our research. Which I'm like, how is she critical to the research? And how did they just stop her? So he, so Baz drops her, and then where does she go? She just kind of. Oh, wait a minute! There he goes. He took off the little bug guy. Yeah, the little bug guy got her. Poor Kelly. I don't feel bad for her because I don't know really anything about her. <laughs> no. And and you can see here that Jessica's trying to temper Theros' response, um, but it doesn't really work for her. <laughs> and so, you know, she's 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 at risk, you know, being in this position, trying to trying to straddle that line. But then, you know, Joe Belaine admonishes Hal for jumping in. <sighs> Uh, not you don't say. like that character, I know. It's fine. Well, it's it's just she ain't all that great. Um, but you know, it's Hal's book, and here she he's getting criticized by somebody who hasn't done squat compared to what he's done. I realize he jumped in, but yeah, whatever. 
Um, Dude, dude's done a lot. <laughs> but but it's, it. it's the whole that it, it's the whole, you know, they've already tried things and, and, and Hal is written as though he assumes they haven't done anything, you know. Right. Gotcha. All right. So then we go to the chamber of the unseen. Yeah. And I really liked that. That was really cool. Uh, the, these guys, and I don't know who they are, but they apparently know where the resistance has been and knows where they are. Those guys are so cool. I wonder, I'd like to see more with them. Yeah. I wonder, none of them look familiar. No, none of them do. I was trying to place them. Uh, you know, the only thing that struck me as familiar is there was that, there was a, there was a book and I, I, it's, it's evading my memory. There's a book where, I want to say it was Kyle. He had that whole blindfold look going on. Yeah, I remember that. You're right. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. I, then this may be just maybe coincidental and probably it's just coincidental. But I, I like this whole this whole thing. I thought it was kind of cool, that part. I mean, where, where things are slowly being peeled back. And again, for next issue, it says wedding bells. So I'm presuming that whatever was going to take place with Carol Ferris got pushed off an issue. I think so. Uh, my 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 guess is that that's the case, but or it just maybe the person who wrote those the solicitations didn't. Maybe something changed along the way, and maybe that was originally in the script, and it was at the time the solicits were written, and then Adams decided that not to do that here for whatever reason, <laughs> for pacing or what have you. Uh, the second part of the issue, though, is Guy Gardner, and this is also written by Jeremy Adams, but Guy, Guy is on his mission to find. Lobo and he's hasn't been able to find him and he's sitting in a bar and here's a promotion for uh wrestling and <laughs> here's a character about a character called the main man and assumes it's Lobo. So that was cool. I like the little scene with with Booster Gold that was kind of humorous. You know, Lobo's showing up over there in the uh, House of Bernier. Yeah, and I, that's why they said this was a tie-in. I don't know as yeah. if it really is, but uh, he's working with Superman. And, and this whole wham West wrestling across the multiverse was something that Adams did in the flash run. Oh, that's right. I remember that. You're right. And it's, it, it's funny that um, Adams, you know, he obviously, you know, we've talked about him before he worked on Green Lantern, the animated series that one of the characters named is, is Craig Kriegmeister 10, which is obviously an ode to Jim Krieg who worked on Green Lantern, the animated series. And there's a really funny video out there. I think it's on, on Twitter of Jeremy Adams cutting a wrestling promo and Jim Krieg is the announcer. And it's hysterical because uh, Jeremy Adams, who's, who comes off as this very um, calm person most of the time, uh, is doing this over the top, like Macho Man, Hulk, Hulk Hogan mashup of a wrestling promo. Uh, very funny stuff. If you get a chance, go out and look for it. It's on Twitter slash X. If you can find it, it's one of his postings. But Jim Krieg is the the ring announcer, and he's cutting a wrestling promo for the Flash issue for this this wrestling across the multiverse. Uh, kind of funny, and I, I would love the the theme music is a play on the Hulk Hogan theme that he used to have back in the eighties. Uh, American. Yeah. <laughs> and they even, they even say guys, bogus Lobo adventure part one. And I, and I love seeing Kevin McGuire in the artwork, artwork on here because Kevin McGuire, he's got a great style and it works well with guy Gardner. Yeah. He looks cool with his cut, his cut like that. I like. That yeah. Haircut. The haircut is a retro back to the old days. Yeah. Yeah, that's always the guy I remember. Yeah. <laughs> he always reminds me of that kid from Home Alone. You know, the older... Oh, brother. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this is this is over-the-top Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner interrupts a, a intergalactic wrestling match <laughs> to, to arrest one of the people that he believes to be Lobo. So I want... Uh, so I'm gonna get, I guess Craig Mysterio would be a play off of Ray Mysterio then. Uh, it could be. I, I read it as, as Craigmeister. Oh, Craig. 10. Uh, uh, Craig. Oh, yeah, I see. You're right. 10. It is 10. You're right. right. The first time I read it, I said the same thing, though. I was thinking, it was, is, it, is it Craig Mysterio? That was the first thing I, the first time I, when I saw it, that's what I thought, too. 
Uh, but it's interesting. A guy tries to interrupt the match and he pulls the mask off of the main man. Uh, and I don't think that's Lobo. He thinks it's Lobo. Well, I don't think it is. Lobo would not be subdued that fast. And he'd have a mouth on him too. Right. I mean, he calls him Greenie, which, you know, he's done. Lobo has done before. But the makeup is a little off. I loved, I loved Guy Gardner calling him a kiss reject. I thought that was hysterically funny. <laughs> and he escapes with this guy. And the guy does whistle and call this, calls, this, calls the space dolphins. But is that a Cesarean thing? Or is that just the Lobo thing? I don't know. Maybe it is Lobo. Yeah, maybe Lobo's... I mean, it's Lobo's not the kind of guy, at least from as we've read him before, who would try to hide who he is. Yeah, it doesn't strike me as somebody who is. And not only that, I thought Lobo was, he was involved in, in over in Superman's book. So yeah. he could be over here at the same time. Right. That's why I think it's not him is what I think is it's just another Cesarean. Yeah. See, I'm not even this Lobo you're talking about. Not taking me off that ship. You're just put... Yeah, I think it's something about his uh the makeup over his eyes that that little curl that comes out on his cheek. I don't think right. Lobo has that. I it's thought not, he was straight. Yeah, it's not it's not quite right. But I can see Guy Gardner is, you know, your main man, right species. He's wrestling. He calls me greeny. To him, he walks like a duck and, quack, and quacks like a duck. I'm going to go over to I'm going to go over to the Superman book and see what Lobo looks like in there. Oh, I'm, I'm just glad it's the the original Lobo and not that Lobo we had there for a while during the new 52. Because yeah, man, that, was... that can't be Lobo because Lobo, Lobo has those, his eye, his eye markings go like a point. Yeah. Like a half diamond or whatever. Right. 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 So I don't think that's Lobo. I think he thinks it's Lobo because again, main man, I think it's just a series of coincidences uh, to cause the situation just for the humor of it. It's, 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 it's humorous. He's going to deal with the house of, uh, he's going to deal with the space dolphins. And, and so that's why I said, I think it's tangentially related to house of Brainiac. It, it really isn't tied to house of Brainiac. I think they're just branding it as such to, to make it work. And because Lobo is basically a Superman universe character, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always liked Lobo interacting with Green Lanterns. I always think that's been kind of cool. I always thought it'd be cool if Lobo was a Green Lantern. Imagine that. Imagine there was, that. wasn't, did that happen in Justice League, The Last Ride? <laughs> oh, did it? Was it Lobo that did? I know. I, I, I want to say, side, yeah, I want to say at one point, Lantern. at one point he did something with it, but maybe I'm, I'm misremembering. You know, age is a funny thing. I mean, it's always cool when you get it, give it to an obscure. I mean, like the Dark Side Land. I mean, Omega Lantern. That was just the coolest thing ever. Like, who's going to beat the Omega Lantern? Nobody. Right. <laughs> so this was a good issue. I I don't think it was the strongest issue, just for for some of the characterization. Uh, and, and again, that's a completely subjective thing. I feel some of it's out of character. I think some of it just shows that Adams doesn't know as much as the comic book stuff as he knows the animated stuff. So he's kind of filling the blanks in and making some assumptions, but th that's just my opinion. Uh, still a fun book. Just there are parts of it that rub me the wrong way. And it's still going in, in, into a great direction. Yeah. And, and I mean, Zermanico's art and, and uh, he wasn't the only one doing art. Who else was doing the art in this issue? Uh, oh, Aman, Aman K. Nahalapan also did the artwork in this issue. And, and there are styles I thought worked really well together. I, I thought the art was great. Just there were just a couple little things in there in terms of the writing that that hit a wrong note for me personally. Uh it's the lack, you know, the slack artwork. Cause he's he's buff. Oh, buff the jam. Pump it up. Pump it up. <laughs> you can see him doing like, the chair he's doing the chair workout on Oa, you know. <laughs> the lock always reminds me of that. That that character off of Mortal Kombat had the four arms, whatever. Oh yeah, Goro. Goro, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing two six. But all right, well, next issue of this eleven will be out in what about a week? Uh, a couple of weeks, yeah, yep, mm -hmm. yep. So we've got some listener feedback. So we'll take a quick pause. 
come back and hear what you guys have to say. This is Salak, Green Lantern of Sector 1418, and you are receiving the podcast of Oa. The podcast of Oa. Our first message is from Tommy from World at War Comics. Transmitting in 3, 2, 1. Another great show, Myron and Phil. Hey, Tommy, thanks for, so much for reaching out to us. Uh, I, if you guys aren't following World of War Comics on YouTube, Tommy does some really good interviews with different creators. He had Jeff Johns on not too long ago. Uh, so I appreciate it. Tommy had us on his show a while ago, uh, talking Greenland with him, which was a lot of fun. It was interesting to be on the other end of an interview for a change. <laughs> but yeah, he's, uh, got a lot of cool, uh, he's got a lot of cool uh, people that come on his show. Yeah, yeah. Some of them. Yeah, me, yeah, me too, me too. Especially the Jeff Johns one. I'm, I'm Jones into interview Johns, and I've got a, I've got to follow up on a couple of things with him, him and his folks. But uh, thanks, to Tommy, for reaching out. And and like I said, if you guys are not uh, following his content, you definitely should, definitely should. Uh, Power Ring, why don't you give us the next one? The next message is from Boris, who has some additional comments about Green Lantern Two Six, transmitting in three, two, one. Hi. Me again. I wanted to express my sincere appreciation for the engaging discussion in episode 241. Hearing my previous email featured on the podcast brought a smile to my face, particularly when you delved into the topic of my silly love of 2-6. The timing of the episode couldn't have been more perfect, coinciding with Jeremy Adams' inclusion of 2-6 in Green Lantern number 10. Intrigued by this choice, I reached out to Adams via Twitter to inquire about his decision to spotlight 2-6 among the Lantern Corps. His response was enlightening, he found her interesting. In jest, I also asked that he refrain from killing her, lol. You mentioned that she was a background character in the issue, however, I respectfully disagree. To me, it felt more like an unexpected promotion. Typically, in the past, she's been relegated to filling out crowd scenes. Hal addressed her by name. She's a named cameo. When your favorite character is as obscure as 2-6, any acknowledgement is cherished. It's also possible that this marks 2-6's first dialogue balloon since her involvement in Lost Army. Boris, hello again. You know what? I was telling my wife about you the other day. I was like, you know, we had this really, really, really nice uh, listener feedback. And his name was Boris from Scotland. And she got a kick out of it because it was like, Boris from Scotland. It just doesn't seem like it fits, right? But what a great name. I love Boris. So Boris is talking about 2-6, which gets some screen time in this late, last issue of GL10. So. I'm sure he's pretty happy about that. <laughs> yeah, and I and I and I get Boris's comment about two six not really being in the background. Right. Uh, for me, it's it's. I, I would rather see more of the alien lanterns in the foreground and having a lot more to do than saying a couple comments and being done. And and that's just my pet peeve. It, it's great though to see her being used. Uh, it's rather than just being background alien eye candy which is what uh, so much of the time we get anymore uh, right. i like the fact that go ahead screen time and then having at least having some dialogue right i mean right right dialogue. i think it's great that boris reached out to jeremy adams on twitter yeah. about how he did <laughs> he said please don't kill her <laughs> <laughs> i mean because you never know what's going to happen to these characters you know i mean we might we might never see baz again after this issue how sad yeah. would that be <laughs> i'm not taking the bait <laughs> but i do hope for boris's sake that two six has a continuing role in the resistance yeah we'll put it like that and i don't find i don't think that she wouldn't i mean she seemed like she was pretty prominent in this part yep and i so. and i do think boris is correct i think this might be the first time since lost army that two six has gotten to have any any talking time on panel well, imagine you're a fan like Boris, right? Who likes an obscure Green Lantern like Two Six. I mean, it happens, right? And right. you don't get what we're getting. Imagine how this guy feels, right? He doesn't right. see his character. Right. He loves all the time. Well, and and that's my problem is that is that the franchise is diluted with so many Earth Lanterns that the writers give the panel time to the Earth Lanterns right. instead of the cool alien characters, which is the better part of the the mythos. 
But I like Sodom Yacht. I hadn't seen what happened to him since. I, I think. Yeah. I really think I reach out to you every couple of years. Does anybody know what happened to Sodom Yacht? <laughs> because I think I've had a, had a discussion with you a while back before. Yeah. But yeah, I feel for you, Boris. I mean, you know, that's something that that needs to be. I think needs to be done i mean at least have a green lantern core book at one point with all the aliens i'm i'm grateful to see her we don't get me wrong i just wish that there was more prominence of the alien characters that's one of the things i really liked about that the whole peter tomasi green lantern core relaunch is it focused so much on the alien characters it gave them a prominent role you still had a couple earth lanterns in in the mix but they didn't like push them to the forefront at the detriment of the alien characters. Uh, speaking of the the Peter Tomasi uh, Green Lantern Corps run, the second omnibus is coming out in September of mm-hmm. the Green Lantern Corps run, which again, if you guys, if, if you're listening to the show or watching the show and you've never read the Tomasi era Green Lantern Corps book, oh, you're missing yeah. out. It's it's such good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Two sec, two sec would have been in that a couple of times, I'm sure. I bet it the right re- I'd have to go back. I don't remember when she came out, when she was introduced, but there was just so many good characters, you know, that, that came out back then. And unfortunately they haven't had the staying power of like a Kilowog, uh, but you know, they Kilowog didn't have to compete with 17 earth lanterns. So uh, anyway, uh, powering, why don't you go ahead and give us our next listener feedback? The next message is from cloned adventure transmitting in three, two, one glad to see you guys back all right clone avenger wrote wrote uh, wrote into us glad to see that we're back and we did we were off for a little while we had trouble finding time and you had stuff going on and i had technical issues with my new house sadly but here we are i think we've done back-to-back weeks now um a couple a week or two in between we we were going to do some more last week but things didn't work out and i ended up going out of town this past weekend and but Life gets in the way sometimes. It always does. It always does. It does. I mean, you know, it's all, we're just doing this for the fun of it. And I like to have a more regular schedule, but sometimes life just doesn't help out in doing that kind of stuff. Agreed. But well, we're going to try to be more regular, you know, Uh, we need more fiber in our diet. Right. (laughs) All right. Uh, The next two messages have a common thread with war world. So, Power Ring, why don't you play them both back-to-back? Very well. I will play both messages back-to-back. The first one is from the Daniel, and the second is from J.P. Roca. Transmitting the joint messages in three, two, one. Hey, just FYI they did a compendium of Superman, Wereworld that collects the main story and all the tie-ins. I was a little disappointed that the Radiant Dead didn't have a more direct connection to John, But I'll have to read Wereworld Saga to get that deeper connection. Wereworld was no good. Reading it was torture worse than that faced by the inhabitants of Wereworld. Hey, Daniel, great to hear from you. Uh, for those that don't know, Daniel runs a Green Lantern book club on our Facebook group. So there's a blog of a Facebook group and Daniel runs a, a book club where they get together uh, and they meet either by Zoom or uh, uh, some might be Skype. I'm not sure exactly. I can't remember what Daniel's using. And they get together and they talk about books. So they'll, he'll say, you know, that for this next chat and get together, we're going to read these books. And then they get people together and just talk about them, which is a, a great thing. And Daniel does it uh, out of his own love for Green Lantern. So I appreciate him adding that to the community uh, and, and such. I I have not read Superman World World yet. And so uh, I, I was sure there was something out there for it. So thanks for letting me know about that part. I, I haven't now... Phil, did the Radiant Dead show up in that? Because I know you read it. Yeah, they did. They did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I and I do want to get the uh, buy the collected. I do want to buy a hard the hardcover edition of that at some point. I, it was probably one of my favorite Superman runs, and I've been reading Superman since what eighties, you know, early eighties, you know. But I, I, but I, I mean, it, it it was a great. I mean, it was just a great book. I mean. PKJ did did awesome on it. I mean, just did awesome on it. I I'm I'm a I don't want to say I'm not a Superman fan. I mean, I've, there's times when I've read it. Uh, I haven't been reading him a lot. I, my favorite era for the Superman books was back when there were three or four books, and they all kind of tied together. So it was like yeah. every week you were getting getting something, and they and it doing, was very they did tight. That diamond writing. thing where it, yeah you know, yeah 
So you had Superman, then you had uh, Superman, Man of Tomorrow, and then the next week, the continuation with Superman, Man of Steel, or Man of Steel, or whatever. Yeah, and Adventure Comics, you know. Was, right, yeah, I, I really liked that era. It was, I think it all kicked off with the Man of Steel miniseries. It was almost a, it was almost a relaunch of Superman. It was cool. And it was yeah. done really well. And I really liked all that. That was what led up to the death of Superman and so on. I really enjoyed that era. I have not been reading Superman a lot these days. I, I'm interested in it just because of the Radiant Dead stuff, but you know, I'm not I'm not 100 on board one way or the other. But I, I do want to try to read it. I might uh, see if I can pick it up on sale at my my comic shop and get that compendium of sorts. If um, you read the, if you read their main story arc, um, I mean, I think it was a hundred hundred and I can't remember how many pages it was because it was a digital copy that I read. I mean, it was a pretty substantial because it's 12 issues, I think. I think it's full 12 issues, maybe. Like more than that. It was it was long, but it didn't take me long to read it because comic books they don't they don't read long depending on how many how much dialogue is per panel per page, you know what I mean? So right. Sometimes you got a couple pages that are free and <laughs> I'll have to check out in stock trades because sometimes you can get books for like 40% off at in stock trades. Yeah, I'll, uh, get I'll that have to one check it out. Shelf. I, I I do want to get that one. That's why I'd have to give a a hard, hard uh, disagree to J.P. Rocha saying War World was no good. Reading it was torture. Worse than that, faced by the inhabitants of War World. <laughs> Had to hard disagree. Those guys were having a rough time on War World. And I don't know, man. I mean, but it, it all goes back to what we said before. I mean, everybody has their likes. I mean, I we rail on the Thorn Run. And for all I right. know, there's people out there that really like the Thorn Run. And that's fair. A, a couple of them. <laughs> it's like it's like the it's like the Morrison run. I enjoyed the Morrison run. A lot of people did not like the Morrison run. And it and, still gets flack. I still yeah. they read it, they still troll on that run sometimes. Yep. Yeah. Is it's everybody's got different tastes and some things resonate and some things don't. Right. But all right. Well, Power Ring, thank you so much for giving us some listener feedback. Before we go, why don't you tell the audience how they can be a part of our show? You can become a part of the show by leaving a message up to one minute long on our voicemail line. Call us at 406 pod of oa That's 406-763-6362. You can also email us at podcast at blog of oa.com. We'd love to hear from you. All right, Myron, here we go. Episode 242. This was a fun one. I had a lot of fun tonight. It was uh it was comical. Yeah, yeah, we had some we had why. some fun. Had some fun. <laughs> it's loose. You know, it's 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 great when you can you can talk about a book and have fun and make poke a little fun at it here and there. And that's that's when comics are fun. I mean, it had all of our favorites. Simon Baz was in there. <laughs> Everybody likes the Baz every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess the next time we're on is going to be War Journal 8 then. Yep, so next next time we're on, we'll be talking War Journal number 8. And you and I are talking with Tim Sheridan about getting him on to talk about the second half of the Alan Scott series. And we'll do that as not so much as, a, of an interview, but talking about the Green Lantern book, uh, the Alan Scott Green Lantern book, the second half of it with him. And maybe getting some insight about some of the things that he is doing along the way as he was writing it. Some of his insights which which would be interesting and, and hopefully entertaining absolutely so i uh i don't know when this episode is going to get published because i'm heading out of town for work for three days so i won't be back until thursday night and tonight's monday night so i'm going to try to get it done between thursday night and friday night and have it out by the weekend hopefully and then maybe you and i can record again next week and do the green lantern war journal book okay sounds like a plan to me all right, so we'll be back hopefully in a, in a week or two to be talking more Green Lantern. Uh, as always, thank you guys for making us a part of your Green Lantern experience. We do appreciate the time you take to leave comments and feedback and certainly taking the time to listen to us ramble on about comic books. Uh, it, 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 uh, it's something that we love to do, and we're glad that you are out there listening. So, my friend, Phil... We will be back soon. Until next time, keep that power ring charged, treat each other well, and make every day your brightest day. We'll see you soon. 
Thanks so much for watching this Green Lantern video from the blog of OA. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find even more great Green Lantern videos, reviews, podcasts, and more at our main website, www.blogofoa.com. So until next time, keep your power ring charged and make every day your brightest day.